of course, ahead of the G7 meeting, what can Japan, what can PM Kishida do in terms of aiding Ukraine and trying to drum up the support? Of course, he was also in India. Yeah, I think what uh, Kishi is trying to do or has tried to do is show that Japan is uh, solidly behind the G7 sanctions on Russia. Japan also has been uh, providing aid to Ukraine, loan guarantees. It has a, it rolled out a $5.5 billion aid package. A lot of this was loan guarantees. Um, but in terms of like the, uh, the armaments for Ukraine, because of Japan's pacifist constitution drafted after its defeat in World War II, it's barred from providing arms to Ukraine. So Japan has been providing non-lethal assistance uh, to Zelensky's government. But it has shown its solidarity by keeping on board with the G7 in its united front against, uh, the Russia's, against Russia's invasion. John, so how significant is it that PM Kishida actually made this trip in person? And does he risk anything politically at home? Yeah, it's um, from a domestic standpoint, it's quite a big deal because Japanese prime ministers typically don't go to uh, places where they're high security risk. This is probably the first visit by a prime minister post-war to an active war area. Um, it's also, you know, it's a little bit risky for him to make such a bold move, but it seems so far that opposition politicians and his own Liberal Democratic Party are behind his visit. And so it seems to be paying off, even though it is a risky procedure for him. And the Japanese public has really been on board with the um, the measures that Kishida has and Japan's government has put in place to punish Russia for its invasion of Ukraine.